Welcome back to Way Too Early. It's 5.30 a.m. on the East Coast, 2.30 out West. I'm Jonathan Lemire. Thanks for being with us. Right now, thousands of Ukrainians are fleeing their country, a mass exodus that officials say is the start of a refugee crisis in Eastern Europe. More than 350,000 people have fled Ukraine since Russia launched its attack on the country last week. That's according to the United Nations Refugee Agency. Most have gone to neighboring nations such as Romania, Poland, and Hungary. The governments of countries that have in the past been reluctant to accept refugees are now opening their borders. And to that point, Vladimir Putin's actions are strengthening unity among NATO countries and the European Union. The EU's chief executive said yesterday that for the first time ever, the EU will finance the purchase and delivery of weapons to Ukraine. Similarly, the United States, for the first time, has approved the direct delivery of Stinger missiles to Ukraine as part of a package approved by the White House. That decision came on the heels of Germany's announcement that it will send 500 Stinger missiles and other weapons and supplies to Ukraine. This was a historic break from Germany's post-World War II foreign policy. It would not send weapons into military zones. Chancellor Olaf Scholz, just on the job, called it, quote, a new reality. Hard to overstate how important that is. After many initially doubted his capabilities as a wartime president, Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky has emerged as a hero in his nation and around the world. Despite having multiple chances to evacuate, the actor turned politician has stayed in Kyiv during the attacks, reportedly telling U.S. officials this, quote, I need ammunition, not a ride. Zelensky has kept Ukrainians updated on the invasion through videos posted on his social media accounts, calling for resolve against the advancing Russian military. This as he acknowledges the danger he faces, saying in one video that intel has revealed him to be the number one target of the Kremlin. According to two sources who spoke with Axios, Zelensky ended a video call with EU leaders last week by saying, quote, this might be the last time you see me alive. Joining us now, news director for New Lines magazine, Michael Weiss, who has been an essential voice on this story uh, for weeks now. And Michael, we're so glad you're back with us today. Let's start there with President Zelensky. Uh, are you at all surprised from someone who is a satirist, who was the Ukrainian voice of their version of Paddington, it was just revealed? Are you surprised that he has risen to meet this moment and that he has become a hero-like figure both at home and abroad? I mean, I, I have to confess I am. I mean, this is a guy who he was elected with 73 percent of the vote in 2019, but his approval rating in the last few months leading up to this war had sagged below 30 percent. A lot of Ukrainians were quite down on the political establishment, the, the very establishment that he mocked with such great effect in that series, Servant of the People. You have to understand the kind of postmodern spectacle of this all, Jonathan. Uh, Zelensky made a, a TV show that was sort of like an Armando Yanucci style Veep series about a school teacher who goes off on this rant that gets recorded and, and is uploaded and becomes viral, denouncing the Ukrainian government for corruption and, and inefficiency and bureaucracy, et cetera, and then gets elected overnight as president of Ukraine. And then Zelensky himself becomes president of Ukraine. And what we're seeing is this kind of, uh, kind of extraordinary transition of Charlie Chaplin into Winston Churchill. Um, his leadership has blown everybody away. The Washington Post reported that he himself dialed into a meeting of EU ministers. Uh, and just as, you know, some of these nations, including Germany, were, were flagging in their resolve or unwilling and reluctant to provide arms or to really dial up sanctions on Russia to crippling effect, Zelensky's emotional appeal is what swayed them to the point of tears. He said, this might be the last time you'll, you'll ever hear from me. So this is a man who has, has made it amply apparent that he will go down with his country if needs must. Um, and I, I've not seen anything like this in my lifetime from a European mm -hmm. leader. Yeah, and the striking difference between photos of him and his top advisors huddled and hugging and, you know, seeking refuge throughout Kyiv. And then there's Vladimir Putin, who keeps his leaders at, you know, 20 feet away down a right. long table. Putin seeming more and more isolated. And let's go there to the Kremlin. Uh, they sent, as we heard from Raf Sanchez earlier, a low-level uh, official to these peace talks with the Ukrainians. What's your expectation as to what might happen there uh, on the border uh, between Belarus and Ukraine? 
Well, I have very low expectations. I mean, as you say, the, the delegation that Putin has sent is kind of this, this risible cast of characters. Um, the former Russian foreign minister under Boris Yeltsin tweeted yesterday that these are non-entities, right? But the Ukrainians have sent actual diplomats and actual officials, including, by the way, their defense minister, uh, who has been integral to holding the city of Kiev, and he's the one that you've seen photographed huddled with, with President Zelensky. Look, I mean, this is a, a classic kind of Putinist move, um, you know, pretend to sue for peace, pretend to de-escalate while all the while escalating. I mean, I've just seen a, a Twitter thread uh, by a very capable Estonian colleague of mine who was quoting Estonia's head of foreign intelligence saying, look, Russia can't fight this war for another two months. Uh, it is going to be drained and resupplies, especially when sanctions take a bite. And the real fear here, here is that they are going to start committing mass atrocities, uh, that they're simply not going to refrain from, from opening fire on civilians as they see, see them, and that essentially, you know, Putin could very well try to burn Kyiv to the ground. Now, if he does that, uh, I think it, it, it will lead to the end of Vladimir Putin's dictatorship uh, in the mid-term, uh, not in the long term, in the mid-term. I'm hearing chatter from people who in a million years wouldn't have talked about palace coups or military putches, now s suggesting that it's, it's more likely than it has ever been since about 2000, uh, when Russia was still in a very politically fractious state. So uh, this could well be uh, Vladimir Putin's graveyard politically. Perhaps even personally. I, I mean, I never thought I'd utter those words on air, but right. truly, I mean, we're, we're, we're living in an extraordinary period. And certainly to that point, if a U.S. officials I talk to say that's their fear right now, that a frustrated Putin would lash out and really escalate exactly. the violence in Ukraine. Michael Weiss, we appreciate it. We'll have you back soon. Thank you for all of your coverage of this.